so. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because uh, you're told from the time that you're a child there are two things you don't talk about in public, politics and religion. But those are the exact things we need to be talking about these days because there's a change in the air. There's things going on that only come to light when you talk about them. Yeah. Evil flourishes best in the dark. That's right. Doesn't want the light shined on it. That's right. And that's why we have to begin to talk about these things in a very serious way. You know, you talk about the Trump administration uh, before this administration. It was amazing. You know, the Opportunity Zones, $75 billion of money brought in from the private sector into depressed communities, mostly minority communities, uh, lifted a million people out of poverty, provided incredible opportunities, you know, HBCUs. Every time we started talking about HBCUs, President Trump's ears were perfect. And, uh, you know, he established a pipeline so that you don't have to come and beg it uh, That's incredible. The justice system, the inequality of the sentencing, all these things, they were dealt with without a lot of fanfare. And I'm just hoping that the black community is noticing this. You know, a lot of people in the black communities and in the liberal community in general say, you know, Carson changed. I haven't changed one bit in the last 20 or 30 years. You read my books from 20 or 30 years ago, they say the same things I'm talking about now. The only thing that changed is that I became a Republican, yeah. you know? And we need to be, get beyond that and really look at what works for people. Absolutely. And I want to you piggyback know. that for a second, too. So my, both of my parents went to Southern University, both of them. That's where they met. So HBCUs are near and dear to my heart. And my dad would always tell me, Wesley, you have to understand something. I'm 75 years old. He goes, son, I had it difficult. You don't have it difficult. Mm -hmm. We have come a very long way, and for a gentleman like me, who's sitting here as a United States congressman, whose parents are graduates of HBCUs, and at the time, that's actually all they had, and for us to be sitting right here talking about strong black businesses, talking about black excellence, which is exactly what this represents, that's right. talking about the next generation and how can we continue to build on this like the young gentleman in the back. You're a veteran. I'm a veteran. We have veterans on this stage as well. This is all about black excellence, and it's not confined to one party. Right. It's not confined to the Democrat Party. Black excellence is for everyone. Sure. And so whenever I think about my parents that started at, the, at HBCUs and what President Trump has done for HBCUs, mm -hmm. how he has created that pipeline, i got to tell you, I am so impressed by this, and it cannot be ignored. My parents had three kids. All three was went to West Point. All three of us serve this country. It's the definition of black excellence. So creating a pipeline for opportunities for black people at HBCUs is literally why I'm sitting here today. So that investment in the community from President Trump and you work as administration, sir, God bless you and thank you so much for what you've done. That is why we have to continue to build on this. President Trump is a harbinger of black excellence. Do not get it twisted. We have seen it, we have lived it, You're, you articulated every point extremely well, and then how do we build on this for four more years after November?